Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Hey, thank you very much for joining us for our webinar today. This is Paul Kurko with Medicom Health Interactive, and uh, I want to get we'll get this started now. Um, first, I'd like to introduce you to J.K. Lloyd, who is the president and co-founder of Eruptor. And uh, J.K. has over 10 years of experience helping hospitals implement online marketing strategies and campaigns that increase awareness patient acquisition and contribution margins. Uh, JK just has a wealth of experience with SEM and uh, it's going to be a great webinar. So I am going to turn this over to JK now. So, you know, sit back and enjoy the webinar. Okay. Well, hopefully everyone can can hear me and thank you for attending the the webinar today. Um, Greatly appreciate it, and thank you for the intro, uh, Paul. Uh, so what we wanted to do was really jump into what's happening in the, in the online landscape of, of healthcare marketing. Um, we've seen a lot of changes that have happened uh, with, with healthcare in, in the last uh, several years, and in particular what's happening in the, in the digital and online space. There truly is a shift, a paradigm shift that's happening in terms of really being responsible and, and healthcare marketers being responsible for uh, being able to, to track the, the ROI from their marketing campaigns. And so this next slide should, should really resonate with a lot of people on the phone. Uh, we work with probably 100 healthcare systems across the country, and this is a pretty resounding theme uh, around around the board and and really the fact that there's a really challenging landscape with with issue, issues things as the economy uh, health care reform reimbursements dwindling marketing budgets in some cases increased competition in the online digital space uh, really what's happening is, is marketing budgets really need to be utilized to effectively uh, achieve and, and show results and more than than ever and I'm sure that, that folks can agree with this on the phone, that hospital marketers are really being tasked to show real ROI to increased patient volume uh, and, and incre increased patient volume to marketing dollars spent. The days of simply throwing up a billboard uh, ad or, or a billboard or a print ad or a radio ad uh, and not being able to effectively track and measure the effectiveness and how that's actually impacting the hospital system, those days are are quickly fading into the rearview mirror. And what happens with, with the online landscape is being able to really track and measure the effectiveness and, and really patient uh, acquisition and, and conversions. Um, so when it relates to what's happening, literally Google, and I thought this would be a pretty fun slide to put in here, but Google is literally becoming a a household name and the fact that it's a transitive verb that's been added to Merriam's dictionary. So the transitive verb to Google means using search engines to obtain information on something or somebody on the World Wide Web and in this instance it certainly is healthcare. Um, let me move on to the next slide here. So as we talk about Googling becoming the new way to obtain information for health, so literally 87% of online consumers use search engines for health. This isn't data that we just randomly pull from someplace or it's a pew. This is information that's directly from Google. And more and more consumers are moving online in droves to find their healthcare information and most importantly solutions and, and treatment. And so when that's happening, if 87% of, of users are searching online for healthcare information, 58% of those are taking some type of action. And so the question for a hospital marketer is how do you specifically align yourself with the 58% of, of folks that are actually taking some type of action? How do you align your online and digital marketing strategies to those consumers and those potential patients that, that, are, that are ready to, to, to pick up the phone and call or to register for a seminar or to uh, take an online assessment? So 
really aligning a, a search engine marketing strategy at that exact moment that, that users are seeking um, solutions and treatment. So what we have found through the hundreds of campaigns that we run, we're probably running 500 to 600 uh, online uh, search engine marketing campaigns every single month. And specifically, folks are the most commonly searched topics are things around specific diseases or conditions, uh, in particular treatments and procedures. So when when patients are in that are in that part of their journey where they're looking to make take the next step in terms of I just can't live with the hip pain anymore, the knee pain, or I need to see someone about a second opinion for a cardiologist, or I really need to determine whether I have high blood pressure or high cholesterol. Um, really tackling and getting those folks at that exact moment in their journey where, they, where, they're, where they're searching for uh, uh, information, solutions, and treatment. They also search for doctors and other health professionals. So the advantage of, of search engine marketing is really targeting users at that exact moment that they are searching for information, solutions, and treatment. Um, another shift in terms of what's happening online from, the, from a paradigm perspective, one in five patients are now booking via online or by phone. So 56% of patients that are, that, that are taking some type of action are calling on the phone. 23% are booking in person and 20% 21% are actually booking uh, via computer or, or a mobile app or a browser. So making sure that you have a strategy that is, is uh, desktop, mobile, and tablet optimized for users that are ready to take uh, that next step in, in terms of converting. Um, so why search? Why is search so important uh, in, in the landscape? We just talked a moment ago about people using it to find out information, solutions, and treatment. But the, the reality is, is really being able to position your ads at the top of search results uh, at, at, at that time that they're searching for primary care, for example. So search engine really delivers patients at that exact moment in their journey when they are searching for, for those solutions and treatment. And it's really being able to position you in those top one to two to three ad positions. As you can see here in the highlighted orange boxes, these are actual search results from campaigns where uh, the offering is same day appointments, for example, primary care physicians. So as, as users are searching for primary care in their Fairfax or their geo-targeted area, being able to position your ads at the top of search results. Um, so search marketing is absolutely critical to marketing success. We talked uh, a few minutes ago about billboard and print and, and radio, and all of those elements are still important. Traditional radio is not, is, is not gone by any means, and it's still an important part of the, the media uh, schematics. Uh, however, search is so very, very important when it comes to, number one, direct response. So again, aligning yourselves with those 58% of those people that are ready to take action. And then also as it relates to education and information. So you can, again, kind of see the shift that's happening. You can see that awareness and branding on the left, on the left side are very important for things like outdoor and TV. And then also for for direct response and, and information, radio and print are in there. But you can see by by far and away, lion's share is the fastest growing part of the media matrix, and literally will be a 39 billion dollar business by 2019. Um, so, is there a formula uh, for search success, uh, and what does that look like? Um, there are all kinds of elements that, that come into play when, it, when, it, when we talk about a successful search engine marketing campaign. And one of those is, is keywords. So really making sure that you have the right keywords, all of those elements and the right keywords are critical for number one, driving the right audience and the right visitors. So for example, if you are running a, a um, cardiology campaign and you're specifically focused on on keywords that are centered on folks searching for a top cardi cardiology specialist or surgeon or second opinion is a lot different than creating keywords around symptoms of high cholesterol or symptoms of heart disease, for example. So making sure that you're aligning your keywords specifically with the objectives of your campaign. If the objective of your campaign is to make sure that you are 
trying to focus on users that are ready to take the next step for a second opinion or that they think that they need to see a cardiologist um, uh, for, for a potential heart procedure, trying to stay away from keywords like symptoms of uh, or high cholesterol or heart disease, really focusing on more of the cardiologist, surgery, doctor type of terms. So making sure that you have the right keywords for driving the right audience. Uh, also write the right keywords for creating a service uh, awareness for your service lines, as well as creating the right keywords so most importantly you're converting patients. Um, there are a lot of different elements around keywords that come into play. So one of those are broad match modifi modifiers. Uh, another one are broad match, broad match and broad match modifiers that uh, include misspellings, related search searches, relevant variations. My theme that you're going to see here in the next couple of slides is putting together a search campaign is not just setting it up and, and, and trying to get it to run. You really need to understand the nuances and the complexities of what makes a, an SEM campaign successful. Uh, other elements that come into play are exact, exact match. Um, uh, elements, uh, phrase match uh, keywords, uh, negative match, and, and putting negative keywords in around uh, around uh, elements. You certainly don't want folks that are searching for uh, heart elements, but they're actually looking for something for their dog. So making sure you're removing ele any elements around animals or pets, uh, and et cetera. So all of these things are are critical in terms of making sure that you're driving in the right folks into your into your programs. Then we get into elements like ad extensions and call outs and site links uh, that give your, uh, your search engine marketing ads a little more juice in the marketplace, if you, if you will, to talk about your different service lines. So these are all uh, important elements that come into play when you start thinking about the, the, keywords and the keywords and the structure of the keywords and your phrases that you want to use in a particular search engine marketing campaign. Uh, so what makes what keywords make an effective campaign you can see this is just an example for orthopedics so there are a myriad of different of different keywords that can be used things around surgery shoulder uh, sports ligaments reconstruction um, uh, people that are looking for minimally invasive uh, types of procedures so it's again it's really creating these strong baskets of keywords and then creating some strong baskets of ads around that that mirror the objective of your campaign and whether that's again trying to get folks to pick up the phone and call in most instances for an orthopedic uh, specialist or coming in for an appointment to see a, a, a doctor. Um, so uh, some of the just most important things for search engine marketing a lot of a lot of things again come into play so what are your what are your Google quality scores uh, Google, for example, will reward uh, a campaign based on the landing page, uh, and and they will rank your Google Quality Score on a score from one to ten, ten being the best and one being the worst. And so it's imperative that landing pages, for example, and where you're going to be sending users, have strong content, that they have strong call to action, that uh, they mirror what your service lines offer in terms of different types of procedures that your orthopedic service line offers. Do they offer hand, knee, hip, joint uh, replacements and different types of surgeries? So content is very, very important. Uh, so Google quality scores are important. Um, uh, what your maximum budgets are going to be and your, and your uh, daily spend is going to be, uh, your, your relevance in terms of your, your keywords, the, the bid structure that you're putting on your campaigns, all of these things come into play. It's almost like a marionette uh, making a puppet dance. All of these things are happening behind the scenes uh, to create a successful campaign. So between all the effective keywords, all the different search engine marketing tactics and things that go into that, all of these elements lead to a nice, clean, and crisp result. And that is, it really is the final results that matter. It's really positioning um, yourself in in the top one to two to three ad positions, and you can see here again. This is an example of a of a someone has done a search for primary care in their geo targeted area. Your ad is populated at the top of the list. It gives it gives uh, uh, users for Inova Health System primary care physicians with same day appointments available. We talk about callouts and ad extensions. You can see here in this ad extension that shows Fairfax, 
Ashburn, Springfield, and Falls Church. So instantly the user can see that there may be a location near them where they may be able to pick up the phone and call for a primary care appointment and maybe pop over during lunch and there might be a location that's close in, in their area. So um, it really is the final results that matter. Hyper-targeting is extremely important, so being able to target your campaign all the way down to zip code, to county, to mile radius, to DMA uh, is very important. So really depending on the objective of your campaign and where you're looking to specifically target or if you're looking to capture market share from other hospitals down the street, for example, really determining where specifically you, you want to be uh, targeting your campaign. and. Uh, the next element is really the importance of strong landing pages. So we talked about, I talked about that just a moment ago in terms of your Google quality scores. So this is an example of a, uh, a few years ago of a landing page that we worked on with Johns Hopkins. And you can see on this, this landing page, now envision if you will, someone has searched for uh, a cardiologist or top cardiologist specialist in, in their area. Uh, and they have seen the ad and now they've engaged. Once they get to the landing page, uh, you really want to have some clear and concise content on the page that, that really entices the user to, to take the next step. So you can see in this instance that there are full bu four bullet points at the top of the page. Why choose Johns Hopkins? What heart conditions are treated? What kind of care will I receive? And how do I get started? No matter what bullet point that the user clicks on, the only thing that changes on the page is the content. Why choose Johns Hopkins for cardiology, for example, you can see on bullet point one. The great thing about this landing page is the phone number stays static in front of the user the entire time throughout the journey, their journey. Why? Because we want to entice them to pick up the phone and call no matter where they all are on the site. So then calls are, and we'll talk about this in a moment, then calls are tracked, they're recorded on a HIPAA compliant system, and and Johns Hopkins is able to cultivate new patients that are coming in as a result of their search engine marketing campaign. So landing pages are extremely, extremely important in terms of, of A, consolidating your content uh, very clearly and very concisely for the user. One of the things that's important about landing pages, um, users now in today's world, if they don't get to the landing page and when they get to the landing page, if they don't see something that's relevant to them or if they don't see some quick, concise, bullet-pointed content or a clear call to action, they're just going to bounce and they're going to go to your competitor, they're going to go someplace else. So making sure that your format and the content on your landing page has stickiness to it, as we like to say, is extremely, extremely important. So having these landing pages and giving a clear call to action in terms of making a phone call, filling out a contact form, registering for a seminar, and then most importantly, measure, measure, measure every element of these campaigns uh, in, in terms of conversion metrics for calls or for seminars and, and, and et cetera, and tracking and measuring your, your campaigns back to marketing dollars. Um, here's an example of some um, Medicom and Eruptor landing pages that we have created for the Medicom risk assessment. So you can see in this instance, the objective is hip and knee pain impacting your life. So someone has specifically searched on Google for knee pain or uh, what are symptoms of, of needing a knee replacement, for example. Uh, we, we have an ad that, that pops up, they engage with the ad, or they're dropped onto a landing page here that says, knee or hip pain impacting your, keeping you from enjoying your life, take the free assessment to learn more. Same thing with the heart risk assessment or a lung health assessment. So again, a very clear, concise uh, path of least resistance for the potential patient to uh, to to take the the Medicom risk assessment. These are very very effective. Um, so leads us into tracking conversion. So we've talked about we've talked about what are the elements that make an effective campaign. Your keywords, your keyword structure, your ad structure, your landing pages. The next inherent element is really being able to track and measure uh, the effectiveness of your campaign. So. In this instance, uh, this is another example of, of Johns Hopkins, same kind of landing page structure as you saw with Hart. So with, with this scenario, it was for bariatric surgery. So am I a candidate for weight loss? What surgery options are available? What are the benefits and risks? How do I begin the process? Again, no matter what bullet point that they click on, the content changes on the page, uh, but the seminar registration form stays in front of them. 
Uh, one of the things that's important about seminar registrations and one of the things that we found historically as it relates to search engine marketing is the more information you actually ask for someone uh, online, the more apt that they're going to be to bounce from the page. So in this instance, uh, we really wanted to get very, very targeted around um, folks registering for a bariatric seminar without over inundating them with what's your BMI, what's your height, what's your weight, what's your zip code. So in this instance it was what's your phone name, what's your email address, what's your phone number, and what's the date that you want to attend. Once someone clicks on the registration button, there's a conversion, there's a conversion tracking pixel that fires. Johns Hopkins knows without a shadow of a doubt that these users and these registrants came from the search engine marketing campaign and they can track and measure the effectiveness. So, so for example, they can say, okay, we spent $3,000 this month. We ended up getting 30 online bariatric seminar registrations. Our cost per lead is, is X. And Hopkins knows and every other hospital knows that, that bariatrics is generally an elective surgery. So if you're able to drive in leads at $130, for example, on a $3,000 a month campaign, but the downstream ROI and contribution margin for a potential bariatric surgery is ten dollars to $12,000 or $15,000 back to the hospital, you can see that the campaign more than pays for itself over the course of time. So these are just great measurability things that can not only be shared within your marketing team, but can also be shared across the executive suite and et cetera to say, listen, we're actually really being able to, we're really able to actually show the effectiveness of these campaigns and actually how it's resulting in, in, in revenue for the hospital. Uh, so online registrations are a big piece. Dynamic phone numbers and call tracking uh, are, are another large piece. You can see in this example, just as we talked about with, with heart previously as well. So this is liver cancer treatment, for example. Why choose liver? Do I choose us for liver cancer treatment? What treatments are available? How do I get started? We have a dynamic phone number. It's basically just a quick find and replace, for example. So uh, the typical Johns Hopkins uh, phone number may be 888-123-4567. When someone comes in from a search engine marketing ad, um, within the millisecond that they click on the ad to the moment that they get to the landing page, that phone number is just quickly swapped out and it's now 888-327-3212. When the user calls that phone number, it's routed to the Johns Hopkins liver cancer concierge line. The call is tracked, it's recorded, and again, the hospital now has an opportunity to say, okay, we spent $5,000 this month on a liver cancer treatment. We ended up getting 15 qualified callers, our cost per acquisition or cost per lead for a potential new patient is X. And then if they do have a CRM system, they could potentially track what happened with that patient once they came in as a result of the of the search engine marketing campaign. So and then eventually whatever happened to them. Did they end up getting treatment? Did they get a procedure? Um, did they have a liver uh, um, uh, replacement for example? So if I, again, those types of procedures can be very, very high in terms of a an ROI standpoint point for uh, for these facilities. So we talked about registrations. We talked about phone numbers as well. Uh, the health uh, risk assessments with with Medicom, for example. So we have partnered with Medicom on many, many risk assessment campaigns to really track the effectiveness of of folks coming in to take the the risk assessments. Um, and we'll show you a quick case study on that in just a moment. Um, so how do you really get the most out of your search campaigns, right? That's, that's I'm sure a lot of you are, are thinking that on, on the phone or thought, th thought about this in the past or, or on your SEM journey. So number one and first and foremost is know your competition. Know who's in your backyard. Um, a, a lot of times when folks are looking to run a search engine marketing campaign no matter who you're working with either if you're running the campaign internally or if you're using an agency have them go out and determine who the competition is and if they if there are specific tools that you have or the agency has one of the things that we do is when we talk to a hospital we say quick give us your top three competitors that are in your space let us go out and determine for you what they're they're spending on bariatrics uh, for, for SM for example and that allows you to really come back with some budget recommendations 
on what you should be spending in the space. Do you want to make sure that you're spending enough money to be in the game and to make sure that you have enough of an impression share that you're actually the move actually moving the needle and making sure that you're showing up in search results. So knowing your competition is extremely important for a myriad of different reasons. Geo-targeting is extremely important. Uh, it's, it's extremely important not to try to boil the ocean on a $2,000 or $3,000 a month budget, for example, in a 150-mile radius around your hospital. Uh, really making sure that you're spending your budget effectively. If, it's a, if it is a bariatric surgery uh, campaign, for example, there's no reason to try to bring folks in from 150 miles away. Tighten up your geo-targeted radius to a 20 to 25-mile to, to a 20 to 25 mile radius target particular zip codes, for example, and, and really understand where your audience is and where you want to pull them from and understand how far potentially they are willing to travel uh, for a particular procedure. If you guys are the only orthopedic uh, game in town and there's nobody within a 50 mile radius, well, you can certainly broaden your radius to 50 miles to try to get folks to come in. But generally, trying to keep things relatively tight and concise and within your budget constraints to make sure that you're not trying to go out too far and burn through your budget, but trying to keep things a little more compact and closer uh, closer to home. Uh, make sure you're, that, you're, that you're strategically bidding on the right keywords. We talked earlier in the presentation to make sure that, for example, if the objective of your campaign is to increase um, uh, orthopedic surgeries, for example, make sure that you're going after terminology around folks that are specifically searching for orthopedic surgeons, orthopedic doctors, ortho orthopedic specialists, and etc. You don't specifically want an audience at that point that is looking for symptoms of knee pain uh, or, or do I have knee pain. Those folks are better served at places like WebMD or Everyday Health or Wikipedia because they're just now beginning that part in their journey where they may be having some symptoms of knee pain. You really, if your objective of your campaign is to increase surgeries to your orthopedics campaign, focus on the strategic keywords where people are in that point of their journey where they, they are telling themselves, I just can't handle my knee pain anymore. I've got to get in and talk to somebody or I've been to two or, two or three other specialists they are telling me something uh, is something that I don't specifically agree with and I think that I need to get a surgery. Uh, or I need to come in and talk to somebody. So making sure that you're bidding on the right keywords depending on what your tactics and what the objectives of your campaign are extremely, extremely important. Um, we talked about landing page content. So when you are working on your landing pages, make sure that your content doesn't run on and on and on in, in, in terms of full paragraphs and et cetera. Try to bullet point your content. Try to be very, very clear and concise in terms of what it is that you offer. Why why are you different the, than the competitor down the, the street and what and what sets you apart? Do you have some of the top doctors in the region? How many years of experience do they have? How many successful outcomes do they have a year? Um, uh, what types of procedures do you perform? So all of these things are very, very important. Again, we talked about the user users in today's environment, they have it's almost borderline ADD. Our, our belief uh, is that if someone has taken the time to do a search, if they've then taken the time to engage with your ad, by the time they get to the landing page, you really need to have some really nice tight content that they can that they can really absorb quickly. You need to have that landing page stickiness, and then most importantly, you need to really have a great call to action. So where's your phone number on the page? Is it in the upper right hand corner and is the font so small that no one can get to it? Is your is your phone number below the fold? Is it way down at the bottom of the page? Uh, we see this very, very often. Once you have folks on your landing page, make sure that you have a bolded phone number in the upper right hand corner where they can see it, they can identify with it, with it they can see it within the, within the viewership of, of their experience and after they've read that bullet pointed content and they've gotten the quick snapshot, they can pick up the phone and, and, and uh, take that next step. Then layering in other conversion tactics, so uh, whether it's the risk assessments, whether it's call tracking, whether it's bariatric uh, registration forms, all of those things are very, very important to make sure you're embedding on the page so people can take the next, the next step. And again, measure, measure, measure every facet of your campaign so you can report that data, not, to your, not only to your colleagues, but to your executive suite. Um, 
So here's just a quick example of how search works with integrated marketing. We talked a little bit before about how search is going to be the dominant, um, is, is the fastest growing element of the media matrix. However, uh, print and billboard and radio and all those elements still have their place and you may still have directives within your organization from CEOs that, that still uh, and other folks that still want to one, run those types of mediums. So this is just an example of, of uh, a campaign that we ran with North Shore LIJ. The objective was, was really to increase CyberKnife referrals. CyberKnife is a very, very granular campaign. And they really, from a goal perspective, they wanted to grow the business for their radiation therapy and CyberKnife uh, location in Long Island. So they had many different tactics. They had radio advertising, print. They had search engine marketing or pay-per-click, same thing. Um, we had a landing page that was very, very strong, and then they also layered in a social media piece. And the objective of the campaign, the KPIs, were to increase uh, folks coming to the landing page, but then most importantly, conversions and appointments. And so in this instance, you can see that we layered in all of these different elements. We had direct mail, we had print, there were uh, there are some referral elements were coming through, there are social media and radio. But far and away, search engine marketing outperformed every single element. Why? Because when people are online searching specifically for radio or, or cancer treatments uh, and et cetera, we were populating their CyberKnife uh, ad to the top of, of search results and people were engaging. And so really what this shows us is that it's great to have all of these different elements. Uh, but the also effective piece with the with the pay per click or the search engine marketing piece is you can really see the number of phone calls that were we, so again we were tracking and measuring and recording specific phone calls that were coming through from the campaign. So you can see the number of uh, search engine marketing clicks that came through. You can see the cost per click or every time someone engaged with the ad. You can see how many phone calls specifically came through. There were 21 phone calls that came through from the campaign. The cost per call was $679. However, the the treatment ROI for for elements around CyberKnife, uh, they were able to track that data, data downstream to from a revenue perspective around $14,250 per patient, which really gives them a 13 to 1 ROI factor. So, although they're investing in these different mediums, we're able to tr effectively track and measure how the SEM campaign was performing. Um, you can also see on this next slide that all of these elements really worked in conjunction with each other. You can see uh, in the turquoise line here, which is uh, the, the search engine marketing ads, and you can see that while print and while radio and while all these other elements are, are running, you've got a nice little spike in traffic. Why? Because North Shore LIJ was running radio ads. Well, what's a first person's inclination when they're in the car and they hear a CyberKnife or a cancer CyberKnife treatment ad when they're in the car? Well, the first inclination is to get out of the car and get into work and they go to their computer and they Google it. And our job is to make sure that when they did get to a computer or when they, when they were hearing those radio ads, that when they're ready to take that next step, they, they may potentially go to their mobile device, they may uh, be on a tablet, they may be at their desktop computer at work, and once they Google it, we were positioning North Shore at the top of, of search results. But what you can see here is that there's a great spike throughout the course of the campaign, and once radio and print and billboard ends, well, so does the search engine marketing campaign, and that traffic kind of dissipates as well. So the point here is that Search can also work very, very well with some of your integrated uh, efforts um, uh, as well in your traditional uh, traditional mediums. So this is just a quick case study uh, for, for everybody to chew on. Uh, this is a, a most recent campaign that we ran uh, from with the, with the Medicom risk assessment and uh, one, of our, one of our most recent hospitals. So Eisenhower Health was uh, seeking to increase awareness and most importantly com completions to their Medicom Health Knee and Profiler. Uh, we developed a, uh, a comprehensive search engine marketing campaign primarily uh, with uh, the following ele element. So we talked about knowing your competition. So we went out and we did some market and landscape analysis to determine what kind of budget they should be spending on the campaign. We came back with budget recommendations and visitor estimates for the campaign. 
Uh, we then developed all the keyword creation to drive folks into the hip and knee uh, profiler and the risk assessment. Uh, we created all the different ads for, the, for it as well and the search, search engine marketing ads. And then we uh, worked with Medicom as we've done for the last four years or so to implement a code that only fires when users actually complete an entire profiler, an entire risk assessment. So if someone comes into the profile and they get halfway through and they've got to pick their kid up from soccer practice, that doesn't count as a completion. It's only if someone actually sits down, completes the entire profiler, the, the, the code fires or that the conversion tracking code fires and, and, and you're able to know how many completed profiles came from, from the campaign. So this is just an example of what, it, of what it looked like. So you have your landing page here. You have your search engine marketing ads that drive users to the assessment. So for example, when users are searching for hip pain. Well, I've really got a lot of hip pain and it's kind of hindering me. I've got, uh, so any, any variation of hip pain that users are searching for, an ad will populate that says, is hip pain impacting your life? Question mark. Take a free online assessment to learn more. When folks are considering looking at hip surgery, considering hip surgery, surgery, take a free online assessment. The objective here is always to continue to drive people into the Medicom risk assessment. So in this instance, we were specifically targeting keywords around things like knee, hip, pain, symptoms, and other related keywords to drive folks into, into the risk assessment. So from a, from a results perspective, and what we've delivered, the campaign started in November of 2015. We implemented the code uh, with, with Medicom, again, to fire only when folks uh, complete the entire assessment. $3,500 a month budget. Uh, the campaign was geo-targeted specifically around areas around the hospital that they desired. Uh, the campaign delivered over 1,372 visitors to the risk assessment. Uh, from that, there were 49 fully completed assessments. Uh, at an average conversion cost of $214. So when you begin to think about someone filling out a risk assessment, they've taken the time to search, they've taken the time to engage with the ad, they've now completed an entire, an entire assessment, and that allows the hospital to cultivate pertinent information around the user. What's their name, what's their email address, and et cetera. It allows the hospital to, to be proactive in their communique with that potential patient. The reality is, is that if someone comes in for $214, but someone ends up actually getting a, an entire knee or hip surgery or replacement, that downstream ROI back to the hospital overwhelmingly pays for, for the campaign. So these are the kinds of things to be thinking about when you're running a search engine marketing campaign. What are your objectives? What are your goals? What are you trying to get out of it? And, and how do you actually set the campaigns up for success uh, from a tracking and, and measurement standpoint? So that uh, brings us to our conclusion and um, opening the forum for any types of questions that may come through. And hopefully everyone found the presentation to be helpful. Yeah, yeah thanks, JK. At, at the beginning, I forgot to mention that you can ask questions uh, using the side panel. And we do have a question here. And the question is, are there restr restrictions for trademarks based on words like Botox or for fundraising events like raffles? Uh, that's a very, very good question. There are trademarks, and in that instance, uh, you would either need to work with your agency or, or work with Google directly to make sure that you are getting what they call either pharmaceutical or trademark certifications that allow you to use that type of terminology in your campaigns. So, for example, when we talk about Da Vinci Robot, for example, or when you talk about Botox or you talk about specific uh, procedural type things, you would either, you, again, it's, 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 a, it's a making sure that you're either contacting Google or you have a representative at your agency that, that can contact the folks at Google to make sure that you're getting that type of specific certification to display that in your ads. Um, I do have a couple more questions here. Um, how long of a time period should you give a campaign to run before you really look at the success. So is, is there kind of a um, rule of thumb for how long you should let right. it run? 
Right. That's a great, that's a great question. Typically we recommend running a campaign for three months at a minimum in order for the campaign to gain traction and to capture market share and to show conversions. Uh, we have had campaigns that have run for a quick, a quick month. Uh, but, but in reality, it, it really doesn't give enough, enough time to really get a, a, snapshot of, of the marketplace. Uh, one of the things that you can do very, very quickly once you begin to run a campaign is to determine what your impression share is in your marketplace. So for example, uh, if you're running a bariatric surgery campaign at $2,000 a month and um, your impression share is 50%, meaning that you're actually showing up five out of every 10 times that, that, that people are actually searching for bariatric surgery terms in your area, um, and after the first couple of months, you're seeing that you're getting, you know, 10 to 15 conversions a month. A recommendation there may say, hey, listen, you're still at 50% impression share. You could actually look to double your budget in your marketplace if you want to, to increase more seminar registrations and to get more butts and seats and potential surgeries. Our, our, our typical uh, average length or, or average recommendation for a campaign is, is a three-month minimum in order to to allow it to gain traction in the marketplace, allow it to be optimized. When a campaign starts, uh, you always, or we always kind of set it to a, a trickle um, before we turn the full spigot on because we really want to make sure that we are positioning clients with the right keywords and the right ad structure. And sometimes it takes the first couple of weeks of the campaign to really fine tune it um, uh, to really where it's humming along and then, you know, you use those, you know, you use the remainder of the, the, the campaign the next two and a half months or two, you know, two and three quarters months to really get some good, good tracking and get good conversions out of the campaign. So typically a three month minimum. All right. Um, I have another question here. Um, what types of things do you look at for the, in the marketing landscape analysis that you had mentioned in the case study? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about market landscape analysis, that is, that's a great question. So looking at number one, competitors, uh, as we talked about before. So what are competitors spending in the space? Uh, also from a market landscape perspective, uh, we generally will ask the hospital for what are your primary service and secondary service areas or what are the zip code areas that you'd like to target? Uh, then that data and that information is, is, is taken and, and we will um, provide uh, population density numbers. We will compare that data and, uh, to other campaigns across the country that have want to run in similar markets of similar population density size and comp uh, similar competition size to come back with, with budget recommendations. So it's, so it's number one competition, number two, uh, what's the geo-targeted area that you're looking uh, that you're looking to target? Number three, from that, how, how what are the number of potential users that are in that area? What is that population? And that allows us to really kind of back into uh, that that landscape and some budget recommendations for the campaign. All right. Now, um, are there any strategies that you've come across that? would be effective in keeping the keyword pricing at the lowest possible amount? That's a very good question. Um, so as it relates to keyword strategy, uh, the cheapest, the, buying the, the cheapest keywords is always not the most effective strategy and I'll tell you why. Um, uh, typically when you are in a space where you're talking about most of the campaigns that are run are specifically designed around trying to create this for their for service lines cancer heart orthopedics bariatrics you name it the objective is to increase uh, increase patient acquisition in order to do that you need to make sure that you are bidding on the right keywords and we talked about that earlier uh, by having keywords structured around orthopedic surgeons, uh, orthopedic doctors, specialists, uh, top, best, etc., cetera, um, uh, some of those keywords, and most of the time those keywords are a little bit more expensive. Um, 
because they are less general. They're not they're not keywords around things like symptoms and et cetera. Um, so when you're bidding on more expensive keywords, but you're also getting the right traffic. So anybody can drive phone calls, right? But the question is, what's the quality of the phone calls? What is the quality of the potential patient that's being uh, delivered to the door? So our, our methodology has always been, it's okay to pay a little bit more for the keywords because they're the right keywords that bring in the right audience that brings in the right conversions to spend the budget effectively. So it's much easier to tell a story to say, hey, listen, we spent $3,000 this month and we ended up getting 15 phone calls that were actually converted patients as opposed to, well, we spent $3,000 this month and we drove in 500 phone calls, but all of them were terrible, right? And we burned through the budget. So uh, depending on the methodology and the strategy of the, uh, of the, the campaign will dictate uh, the, the, the price of, of the keywords. But in most instances, if it's driving volume and increasing lift to service lines, it's, o it's okay to pay a little bit more because the quality of the, of the patient that you're going to be delivering is going to be much higher, if that, if that makes sense. That, that is a couple. We do have one. I was just going to say we have no more questions, but we do have one more question here. Should keywords contain geolocations, for example, knee surgeon Vermont? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, as uh, that's a, that's a great question. So, um, so when you select your geo targeting for the campaign, it will it will automatically self serve to the geo target locations that someone has selected in Vermont, for example. But it certainly doesn't hurt to to and, when, and what happens is when someone actually types in knee surgeon Vermont, it's already or knee surgeon Burlington, Vermont, or what have you, it's automatically going to self-populate the, the ad anyways. But so, so by putting in that search criteria, that's fine, but it's also going to be encapsulated within the geo-targeting parameters uh, that, that you have selected for the campaign um, beforehand. So it, it, it all works in conjunction with themselves. All right. Well, it looks like, unless somebody has another question, uh, I just want to uh, thank JK for helping us out today. It's, it was a great webinar, some really valuable information that I know I myself, as the marketer here at Medicom Health, will be using some of these tips. So uh, I hope everybody uh, took away as much as I did from this webinar. But uh, all right, well, it looks like we are wrapping up about 10 minutes early. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Thank you.